In this video, we are going to briefly talk about uh, multiple pipe systems. And uh, well, it's important to discuss this because in a lot of piping systems, usually we have more than one pipe involved. So if we have like only a single pipe flow, whether that is straight or whether it has bends in it, that would be classified as a single pipe system or a single pipe flow. But a lot of times, we have, let's say, uh, multiple piping systems. And by multiple pipes, I mean it could be exactly like this, but the pipes would have different uh, diameters, let's say. So this pipe could be connected to another pipe with a larger diameter. And then this pipe could again be connected to a pipe of a much smaller diameter and obviously the direction of it could change as well using uh, using valves or T's and joints like that. So it's important to talk about multiple piping systems because it is a complex system of tubes, it is a complex system of pipes and usually let's say whether you're talking about a water distribution system within the city or any other kinds of systems uh, the governing equations for multiple piping systems remain the same as they are for single pipe systems but there's certain complexities that can uh, arise and some of these complexities we're gonna look at so we're talking about multiple piping systems and one of the ways these piping systems could be arranged is in series so this is the series arrangement um, in a multiple piping system and we can see here that the diameter is changing obviously for all three pipes we've got three pipes here and this is probably the simplest multiple piping system um, every fluid particle that is passing in uh, the pipe through through each of these pipes is shown um, flow rate is the same in each pipe so Q1 is equal to Q2 equals Q3. Um, the velocity is obviously changing because the diameter of the pipe is changing. So let me just write this down here. The flow rate is not changing its uh, equivalent for all three pipes. And what else? Well, uh, velocity is changing and because of that the head loss then will change as well. So head loss let's say from point A to point B would be um, a combination of head loss in at section one, head loss at section two, and head loss at section three. So I could just write it down as if I was looking at head loss from point A to point B, I could write it in terms of the head loss that takes place at section one plus head loss that takes place at section two and plus head loss that takes place at section 3. So these are the two governing equations for a multiple piping system uh, that is arranged in series. Also other than this, um, the friction factors would be different for each pipe. So friction factor would be different for each pipe. Uh, of the form F1, F2, and F3, and they're different because Reynolds number through each pipe is different. So if I was to indicate, let's say, Reynolds number, which is equal to rho Vt by mu, um, I would have to include subscripts here because Reynolds number, it could be, this Reynolds number could be in terms of for the first pipe or the second pipe or the third pipe, so I represent it by I. Uh, the velocity we know is going to vary uh, across each of these pipes plus the diameter of each of these pipes is different as well. The fluid properties remain the same so because of that the friction factor is going to vary as well and other than that the relative roughness factor which is um, going to be equal to this factor that is going to be varying as well across each of these pipes. So I represent it by subscripts 2, epsilon i divided by diameter i as well. So they're going to be different as well. So if the flow rate is given for this kind of system, then it's going to be a straightforward calculation to, because then you would have to determine 
the head loss or the pressure drop if flow rate is given to you then these two would be the unknown variables and this is called a type 1 problem um, this is something that you should have looked at when you're looking at the single pipe systems as well so a type 1 problem is when you've got flow rate given to you but you are going to be determining the head loss for the pipe and the pressure drop of the pipe so this is the type 1 problem it's relatively straightforward but if let's say the pressure drop is given to you and you have to determine let's say flow rate so if pressure drop is given to you and you have to find out the flow rate across the pipes then that is called a type 2 problem and now that is a bit more difficult to determine because you have to apply an iterative scheme you have to go with trial and error schemes and just like that if you were to find out let's say um, the pipe diameter and let's say one of these variables was given to you then that would be a type 3 problem if you were to find out the diameter of the pipe that would be a type 3 problem it's called a type 3 problem and again it's a bit more complex you have to go with the iterative scheme trial and error method so you have to go and look at uh, take a look at a couple of examples see how you can work this out um, another type of multiple piping system so this was series and then the next one the most common one that we can look at is called a piping system which is in parallel okay so just like the terminologies that you must have seen when you're talking about let's say electrical circuits and stuff with ohm's law where we're looking at series and parallel kind of the same thing but obviously it's a bit more complicated because with ohm's law you're dealing with a linear equation but with uh, fluid mechanics over here you're dealing with um, more complex equations so that's why you have to be careful with the variables here so for this uh, parallel piping system now the fluid is traveling from point A here okay so the path is that it's traveling from A to B here and uh, while the total flow rate is going to be equal to uh, the sum of the flow rates in each pipe so if I was to write the flow rate for this it's going to be equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 so that is the flow rate relationship for a parallel piping system and uh, the, the head loss across each of these pipes is going to um, be equal to each other right now so I could write that as head loss across pipe 1 is equal to head loss across the second pipe and it's equal to the head loss across the third pipe so these are the two governing equations and again it depends on what is known to you and what is unknown to you uh, to be able to figure out the type of problem it is and then to apply that scheme on it whether it's an iterative scheme whether it's a more simpler pro problem so it depends on uh, the variables that are given to you and the variables that you need to find out so this is the second piping system parallel piping system and now we're gonna look at the third kind of piping system which is called a loop so this is called a multiple piping system that is in a loop whoa okay hold on and well in this case for a multiple piping system in a form of a loop uh, flow rate through pipe 1 over here is going to be equal to flow rate through pipe 2 and pipe 3 so that's going to be Q1 is equal to Q2 plus Q3 um, other than this if we were to write down the energy equation between uh, the surfaces of each reservoir I could write it in terms of well simply in terms of pressure at A in this form plus the velocity and plus the elevation term and if I was to equate this and see what is happening at 
uh, section 2 here, then I could equate it in terms of pressure at B uh, plus the velocity that we have at point B here, or section B here, um, plus the elevation, and plus obviously we would have the head loss term associated with the first pipe, and plus the head loss term that is associated with uh, the second pipe. And if I was to write this equation for the third pipe, it would be exactly the same. So this term would be exactly the same. Now it would be equal to exactly the same terms plus head loss at station 1 plus head loss of pipe 3. So basically the head loss for pipe 2 has to be equal to the head loss for pipe 3. Although the pipe sizes are different, the flow rates can be different, but this is the condition that this kind of loop system has to fulfill. Um, and uh, yeah, what else? So combine these two equations, you would get head loss at 2 is equal to head loss at 3. So this is the major equation that we are looking at. Um, okay, so these are the three major type of piping systems. And uh, yeah, one more system that we should look at. This is called a three reservoir problem. Okay, it's called a three reservoir problem. Give me just a second, let me just write it down. And basically with a this kind of system, although it looks relatively simple um, than most types of multiple piping systems, it only looks simple. This is a branching system, so there's different branches that are separating out of the first pipe, let's say. And these three reservoirs now are at uh, elevations, let's say, that are known to us. So this would be at uh, Z1, Z2, uh, Z3. So we know the elevation of these three reservoirs. And so we also know the length and diameter of the pipes, the roughness of the pipes. So the problem would be to determine the flow rates in and out of the reservoirs. So if the first valve is closed here, okay, so this, if this valve is closed, then the fluid would basically flow from B to C, right? Because this valve is closed, so it can't flow in that direction. Um, and then we could also carry out calculations if, let's say, we were to close this valve and this valve was open, so then there would only be interaction between these two pipes, pipe one and pipe three. So depending on which valve is open and which valve is closed, you could figure out the direction of the uh, flow through the pipe. But if, let's say, all three of these valves are opened up, then the calculations become a bit more complex. And uh, then we have to kind of figure out and calculate how and to which side the flow is going to be flowing through, depending on the elevations, of course. So in this kind of flow problems where where all these three valves are opened up these are more complex and usually you do not know the flow direction or it is not obvious and so uh, whatever the solution process is you would first have to determine uh, the flow direction and then you would have to find out let's say the flow rates within the pipe or whatever variable that you're looking to find but first of all you would have to find out the flow direction I'll just leave this example here for you so you can uh, work through it yourself. Try solving it by yourself without any help so you can have a good idea about how you can work this out. Maybe try uh, using the concepts of hydraulic grade line here if you can. Just see if you can work with that. If not, go with a different method using the energy equation maybe, finding out the velocities. And uh, yeah, so maybe just look at this problem and try doing it yourself. You have to find out the flow rate in and out of the reservoir you do not know the flow direction so first of all find out the flow direction because all three 
uh, valves are well there is no valves here but so that means that the flow is open up for all three reservoirs to interact with each other so elevation is important here you're ignoring the minor losses here you're only looking at major losses so uh, try working out this problem so this is uh, the discussion for today mostly uh, the point is that there's different kinds of approaches that can be applied to multiple piping networks and usually the point of all of this exercise is to build up uh, the capabilities to work out let's say uh, problems that would involve a network of pipes so usually let's say if you're looking at cities or infrastructure you would see that there's multiple inlets in the pipe so you've got more than one inlets here and uh, you've got multiple outlets too um, so you've got an in inlet over there and then you've got multiple inlets through which the pipe uh, flow is happening and then obviously you have multiple outlets as well so that then makes our life a lot easier uh, a lot harder sorry it makes a lot makes it a lot tougher so um, this kind of system it's a lot harder to work with um, it's also dependent on well how much of a uh, branching system you're looking at uh, there could be points where flow rates could be zero so you would have to account for those calculations too in here and then usually in order to solve this kind of problem where you've got a network you use trial and error methods um, or you use procedures that involve matrices and that are, that's usually done through computer softwares and stuff so for now we're going to limit our discussion to four different types of piping systems uh, the series piping system, parallel piping system, the loop system, and then the last of all, the three reservoir problem.